Hello and welcome to the Limitless Landscapers podcast. I'm Paula, your host, the Landscapers coach, and today I'm with Kendall from Build a Story. So without further ado, let's go to the show and talk about marketing, websites, and every other thing to do with landscape and businesses. As the co-founders of the Landscaper Circle, we help you get more money, time, and freedom to become limitless through our experiences as fellow landscapers and our tried and tested methods. If you want help with your marketing, managing, or growing your business, you've definitely come to the right place. If you're a landscaper, garden designer, or supplier to the industry, then hit subscribe so you never miss an episode. Now, let's get back to the show. Hello, Kendall. Welcome. Hi, how are you doing? Not too bad. Yes, Kendall, let's start at the beginning because people might not know much about you, about Build a Story. So I'll go straight over to you. Where did it all start? Where did it all begin? What's your story? Sure. Yeah, going way back, I studied marketing and advertising. Didn't really do it for me at that point in my life. So went looking for something else and Landed, I was, I'd always been creative at school and that sort of things and always liked being outdoors and went and did landscape architecture, thinking that would get me, thinking that would get me outdoors, but ended up just being in front of a computer, being a CAD jockey for (laughs) for ages. And then from there, I did commercial landscape architecture for a little bit and then moved into the residential side of things because I really liked that one-on-one interaction with people designing people's space. I like the transformation and how it changed people's lives. I got that, yeah, more, I got more from the more intimate residential side of things rather than working on big commercial or urban projects. Yeah. So then from there, I went off and yeah, started my own practice with my wife, landscape architecture practice, focusing on the residential side. And we had creative success. We got a few of our designs got pretty well recognized, but commercially didn't do so well. I, I just don't think the way we designed wasn't, it was a labor of love and it was very difficult to charge what we needed to charge basically. Yeah. From there, went off, did a few different things all around small business and ended ended up working for a company who basically did 3D visualization packages for landscapers and builders and and to use those packages to in their proposals, in their marketing, that sort of thing. And I got a lot of experience working with people from all over the world remotely Mm -hmm. by Zoom and that sort of thing. And we can touch on that a little bit later when we get to build a story. And then, but also really getting right into the marketing side of landscaping and building. Yep. And... At the same time, I was making videos just for fun. I'd always taken photos and made videos. And then a few of my mates in the industry reached out and said, hey, can you can you, you make mine? some videos for the business? <laughs> so that rolled into me creating a business called Saga Creative, where I was making mostly for social media in the early days, videos showcasing projects. And then that evolved into videos documenting the construction of projects and then that sort of evolved into sort of uh, more evergreen videos testimonials company stories that sort of thing yeah <laughs> and then the evolution of that and we're almost at build a story the evolution of that was just seeing what worked from a storytelling perspective and realizing that the story needed to be able to the story of of builders and landscapers needed to be told beyond social media. Mm -hmm. They keep telling that story and going deeper into that story in order to convince a client or potential client to hand over hundreds of thousands of dollars or a million dollars or whatever it is, whatever the costs. And and realizing how valuable content can be uh, in that respect to tell that story. And so build a story is basically created to help companies develop a strategy yep, and then implement around content and then implement that content and distribute that content at the right point in the buyer's journey at the right point, right when a potential buyer might want to find out a piece of information or go that little bit deeper, then that's, you've got that content ready 
to deliver it to them. And yeah, so that's basically what created Ready to build a build story. A story. I mean, cool. Um, so yeah. And I guess the reason you focused on this genre, so landscaping, trades and stuff, is because you're in it. So you've got a more yes. deeper understanding of what needs. Yes. Yeah. And how important is content marketing and what is content marketing? So there'll be a few people out there who'll be like, what the hell are they talking about? Content marketing, what is it? It sounds yes. fancy, but it's not. We know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's anything that you're putting out into the world. So written content, photographic content, video content, graphic content, what whatever it is that you're putting out there. It's finding, yeah, finding the right piece of content to, to the lead or the inquiry at the right time is critical. And I think that's content marketing. That's having that strategy to go, okay, when someone's looking at my social media, this is the sort of content that they want to be looking at. But when they're getting close to signing a contract, then this is the kind of content that they want to be seeing or need to be seeing. Yes. And touching upon that, how important to you? I, I think it's imperative, but knowing your target market, creating your avatar or your ideal client, how important is that when you're coming up with a content strategy? Oh, it's massive. It's huge. And it, it should be the very first thing that everybody should be thinking about when they're, we're talking about putting yourself out there, putting your business out there. And I saw this so much working with clients when I was creating videos, particularly as we started to get into more evolved videos. And they're really struggling what to say. Yep. And I think the once when you know or who your business is, having a brand identity and a brand personality. So you've got where, where you're talking from and then, yeah, knowing who you're talking to. When you get that dialed in and not just written on a piece of paper and put and go, yeah, hey, yeah, I know my target market. Yeah. yeah. And then you, you need to really know it to be able to reel it off on the tip of your tongue all the time. That just makes speaking, whether it be writing or whether it be on video or, or yeah, in an Instagram caption or something like that, whatever it is, in an email, it doesn't matter where your the content is. Knowing that is just, it's crucial to, it's um, crucial. to being effective. Yeah. Yeah. It's crucial to the whole marketing strategy that you put out there, really. Because I know landscapes at the moment, they're, a lot of them are struggling for leads and... Some of them say it's a bit quiet in in the UK. I know you're in Australia, but in the UK, this is a quiet time. It's not sunny here. I know it's quiet and that's fine. Yeah. What is the one thing that you think is the most important part of a marketing strategy for landscapers if they are looking for leads at quiet period? Yeah, good question. Um, I think... <laughs> On the spot, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> From a strategic point of view, being authentic in your content mm -hmm. I think because there is work out there and you want to stand out and I think a lot of times business owners are so afraid of putting themselves on the line basically and putting their business on the line in doing something a little bit different or portraying themselves a bit different and it all ends up looking a little bit generic yeah so I think and that's where knowing the business identity and being confident in who you are as a company and as a owner um, that helps because you yeah. can go, I, I, this is a strategic decision to do this. And I think that is huge in differentiating yourself because yeah. then you'll connect, you'll connect with the client that wants to work with you. Yeah. And would you say that includes putting themselves out there? Because a lot of landscapes I know or, and designers actually are a little bit nervous about being the face of their company. So they tend to yeah. not want to put photos up. They don't want to, yeah, they don't really yeah. want to show themselves. Absolutely. And I think that just makes the the sort of looking like every other company worse. Like you are, in a lot of cases, you are your business's unique selling point. Yeah. And you're the one driving the culture and the kind of company. And yeah, it's, it is, it's difficult at, at first to put yourself out there, but I think with practice, it becomes much easier and getting on camera as people know, buy from who they know like, and trust getting on camera you're, you're starting that process going yeah. you're, you're taking it beyond the images of your projects and, and your website and that sort of thing you're you're attaching this person that someone can connect with 
And that's one of the reasons why I love video so much, because I think that just can go a huge way to building that rapport yeah. and developing that, developing that emotional connection before you've even spoken to that person. Yeah. Like I've had, I had clients where they're saying, oh, people, once they've done some video work and they've been put themselves out on camera and they're like, people pick up the phone and they're talking to me like they know me. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and I've <laughs> never spoken to them before. And that, that might be a little bit jarring to start with, but, but that's great. Like that's, you're already ahead of the game if that's yeah. what's happening. Absolutely. And how important is it to have a strong online presence? I think it's like imperative and to have a website is the key initial thing to get yeah. going if you're starting out but yeah how important is it and any tips on website because I know you are pushing the website yeah, so as well the focus with build a story is really on the website as being what I call the lead domino mm -hmm. so you can get there's all kinds of places where you can have leads and get leads from be it social media networking referrals there's a whole bunch of different places to to get them but the website is where you can start to control the narrative yeah. i think a bit more because they're all pulling bits of information from wherever and piecing it together and once you get them to your website that's where you can kick off a much more strategic distribution one yeah. you know, by getting their email or at least getting them to pick up the phone and call you and then you can start to deliver the information that you want them to see when you want them to see it. So I think the website is, it's a massive part of the online presence. I think probably it's lost a bit of cred and mm -hmm. lost in, in recent years with the rise of social media. And, and I think people have lost sight of how important it actually is. And that's why with build a story really that's, we start by looking at that yeah, and develop a content strategy about building out a really strong website, which that's your first sale, right? Is when the lead comes, it's like to getting them to contact you, convincing them to contact you. And the website is can play a huge role in that. And then from there you can, yeah, you can start to do email marketing and all that sort of stuff and go deeper in your content. And like I said, control the narratives. Yeah, I think it's a massive part of online presence. And I think builders and landscapers stuff it up, to be honest yeah. with you, a lot. Either the website is this crazy, it's shiny and beautiful, but it's this huge thing with every project they've ever built, even ones that they're not interested in building anything like that again. And just too much information overload. And it really should be very specific in getting, in making that sale yeah. of, of getting someone to pick up the phone or, or send you an email. And then the other side is when there's just not enough there and there's no sense of who the company is. There's no sense. There's a mobile phone number, but there's no name or photo. Yeah. And so, yeah, so many times I've looked at builders or landscapers' websites and, and just gone, who are you? I don't. And so I, by the time I'm looking at someone's website, like I really want to be able to find out at least your name. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> But, but I'd really like to know. I'd really like to know some of your story, yeah. as well. At that point, so like your what, background and that sort of thing. Yeah. What do you think is the? I know you have covered things are missing when you're looking at other yeah. landscapes. What do you think the key elements are they need to include on their website if it's going to make a difference to attracting that target market thereafter? Sometimes I think it's less is more. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes having less on there, so less, like we don't even put social me links to this people's social media because what, again, you just want that one call to action, basically mm -hmm. get in contact with us. And if you send, if you're like, oh, go and check out our Instagram and go and check out our house or whatever it is, you're basically sending them somewhere where there's a whole bunch of other builders and landscapers. You've got them. They're there on your website. Like, why do you want to send them elsewhere? Removing some of those things. And then also rem removing, talking about the too much information. Yeah. If you can get them to give them your just enough information to persuade them to get in contact with you, to give them the confidence to take it to the, the next step, but not too much. You can deliver and you can deliver socials in an email. You can say, hey, 
it, as soon as they've sent you an email or called you like, Hey, go and check out it. Just, there's heaps of stuff over there. I've got this great video or whatever it is. So you, yeah, you can deliver your more detailed information on your process and you know that they want to hear that stuff because they've taken that next step. Yeah. But on the website, so specifically what's on there, a selection of projects, which are your perfect projects, like yeah. the projects that you really want to build in the target market that you want to be operating in and that that's it yeah not too many you don't want to again you don't want to overload like just enough that what you think to showcase your work to give a really good the, the visitor to the website a really good idea of the kind of work you produce the quality that you produce that you can deliver yeah. multiple projects at that level and then at the end of every project page you should be saying get in touch yeah, like that should be on every single page. It's not so that they don't have to go back and find or click go and click up contact. As soon as they're ready, you should have your your inquiry form. Yeah, like ready right there, go. ready to go. Yeah. Um. So that's a big one as well. Just having that in- inquiry on every page because they will the people the visitor will move around and then it's, yeah, as soon as they're ready, you want to be there to catch them. And yeah, a really strong about section is not long winded. But t- gives a good amount of your backstory, communicates some personality. I think that's really important to differentiate yeah. yourself. And also communicates what you're promising. <clears throat> there's, a, there's a saying that the about sections about the customer. Yeah. I think there's a lot of truth in that. I think you do need to, they do want to know who you are. So don't neglect that. But tied into that um the copy of your about section is like what what you're going to do for them what the experience is going to be like for them um and giving them the confidence that they're going to be in the right hands to to go further so it's like that old adage about features versus benefits when you're selling um you should be selling the benefits not the features all the time so it's a similar setup on the content and i think when you're talking about landscape and this is one of the things I love about it. Like I mentioned before, the transformation. Yeah. Like it's an easy sell, right? Like it's just, you're talking about creating a garden that is going to change someone's life or building a house that's going to change someone's life. And that sounds corny, but I've shot a lot of testimonials and that's what clients are saying. You yeah. Know, you know, I, went, I went from having a patch of grass or dirt or whatever to having this beautiful thing and now we have people around and my kids are playing and like and it, it's life-changing and talk, talking about benefits like having an improved quality of life like it, it doesn't get any of you that's a way more powerful sell than we'll build we'll our paving's going to be amazing or we'll build yeah. you a really fire pit or something so yeah really incorporating that kind of stuff that oh which brings me to mind having some testimonials on your website. Yes, I was going to say this. Some people have a lot of testimonials, but they're out of date or they don't actively go looking for testimonials, but they're pretty important to content strategy and marketing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think, and again, it it evolves, social media has evolved so quickly. Like when I first started making videos, putting a three minute testimonial up on Instagram, people would watch that. Yeah. But no no more but but you can put snippets yes of it and then you have a longer form one on your website and again i think less is more two or three testimonials and then if you've got more that's another thing that you can deliver go here's what here's some more. all these other people are saying and you can you don't want to again you don't want to overwhelm them but yeah testimonials are huge for people to go oh these if this person has had this great experience. I don't know about in the UK, but in in Australia, trades can have a little bit of a stigma. I think people are really afraid, especially when embarking on a long process yes. of months or, or, or a year or however long the project's going to take of having a really bad team of tradespeople on there. And so as much as you can say we're professional and we communicate and we, we're clean and having the proof from someone who's already been through and said they were amazing to deal with yeah. on site. They were polite and we had them around for a barbecue at the end of it. See, that I think that goes a long way to giving a potential confidence. Yeah. Would yeah. you say a video testimonial like outweighs written? 
every time yeah every yeah. time and then you can take the video testimonial and turn it into words yes you know, i think the authenticity of a video you can't you can't beat that and to be honest with you it's much easier like if you can convince the person to be on camera what they say has so much more authenticity to what they would write yeah if you like and again it depends on the and this is where a bit of content strategy comes in, but a bit of coaching and asking the right questions, open-end questions and that sort of thing to elicit the kind of responses that you want. But I think, yeah, with when you ask someone for a written testimonial, their responses can often be quite formal and, again, lean towards being a bit generic. Yeah. But when you're there, you can ask the same questions on a video and you'll get different answers every time. Yeah. Um, and that lends a authenticity to it, yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. I, I think it's just it's another one of those things that you you have to do for your content, but you never get time. Yes. It's easier just to send a link and get them to fill in a form or do a Google review. Absolutely, and I think this, this is again one thing we work on with clients with their content strategy is being really efficient in that sort of thing. And if you can get your clients when you're building their project, mm -hmm. if you can get them at them on camera then at that stage even it, just in the background get them used to that and then obviously you're over delivering so they're really happy yeah. and then and then you should have, you should be doing it anyway but if it's a project which fits with your this is your dream project this is the yeah. kind of project you want you should be throwing everything at it from a content perspective mm -hmm. um because you could build up such a library from start to finish including getting testimonials at the end to leverage in all kinds of different ways having it's you're better to have two of those yeah video testimonials where from a really happy client who's had an amazing experience yeah than having 10 written ones that are that all kind of blend into each other yeah I think. so it's absolutely worth the time and effort to find the clients that have the right things to say about you basically yeah and it what people don't get is the fact that you can repurpose all this content multiple times over. And this is something we're going to be talking about in some upcoming webinars, which will be quite cool. We're going yep. to be talking all things marketing, content, Absolutely. website, which will be fun. But repurposing content, a lot of us don't do that. And I think that's a shame because all of us have so much content when it comes to video, so drone video, yep. drone footage, project for imagery customers that yep. we can talk to and yep. it's all about trying to repurpose that content in multiple different yep. ways yeah yeah you can uh leverage a, a one project to produce i could go on for a long time about all the different kinds of videos that you could produce just from one project for and for years yeah you know, from the start you could film something right at the start talking about what's going to happen at this at this project and then film the construction and then film the, the the garden when it's just been finished and get a testimonial and then go back again and then with all of that content you can oh, the world's your oyster you could turn it into ads you can turn it into social media reels you can turn it into stories you can um, use it to build out those more evergreen videos on your website where you're talking about your company story and you're talking about the kind of projects that you're building and that sort of thing. And I'll tell you, if you've taken the time to shoot or invested in shooting a project through construction, and then you've got a, a client giving a testimonial talking about the quality attention to detail, and you've got someone, a bit of footage that backs that up. Yeah. That's a way more engaging piece of content as well. Yeah. Plus you've got all the reels from that you've got when you've shot that of whatever it is of pool being Australia, we do pools a lot, a pool being craned in or for builders, like a roof truss is being craned in whatever. You've got those little snippets where you can just pump them out on social media, but then you can create these higher production value videos down the track um, yeah. where you've got this beautiful content. And yeah, you, there's so many different uses for content. I think it's just looking at it and, and saying, all right, this is what's happening. This is the project that's happening. Let's film it first and 
capture as much of it as we possibly can. Yeah. And then as your library builds, you start to see more and more possibility with what, what you can create with that library of content. Yeah. But the main thing is just, yeah, collecting it. Just start collecting. Just, I think that's the key, yeah, isn't it? Just start, collecting, yeah. just start videoing, yeah. fo taking photos, yeah. chatting to clients, yeah. I think, it, and just and, capturing as much as you can. Yes. And and again, because um, that might seem like a lot for, for busy people, focusing, going deep on one project is better than skimming across the top oh, on a bunch cool. of projects. Yeah. Yeah, so having the, the project that reflects the business that you want to build, picking that one and getting as, as much content on that than than missing bits and having bits and pieces here on a, on a bunch of projects. So you, you, let's say you've got three projects on the go, pick one and just go uh, All in. film and photograph and, and do you know as much as possible on this one because that allows you to repurpose and leverage that content that much more when you've got the whole story. Yeah, I think it's yeah. really important to reiterate that it all starts with your tar target market and knowing your ideal client because ultimately if you're trying to grow your business and attract higher-end clients or particular projects, then mm -hmm. really your focus should be on capturing those projects you're doing in that category already for that ideal client already so that Absolutely. it talks to your ideal client, it talks to your target market that you're trying to attract. So like you said at the beginning, there's no point putting every single project photo on. If you no longer do, say, fencing or smaller projects, there's no point putting them on your website anywhere. Yeah. yeah. Because it's just um, not worth and, it. And in fact, if they're on there and your business is involved, take them off. Yeah. Yeah. S strip it down to so it reflects exactly who you are and only who you are. And yes. it doesn't confuse anyone. Which, which um, like you say, is why pick that one project that's your ideal and that yeah. you want more of and yeah. capture the content. Don't leave yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, from start to finish, anything that you can think of. Yeah. Interview your guys. I think that's it's not just getting the business person, the business owner on camera. It's getting the team on camera. I think that breaks down a lot of those sort of barriers as well. Um, yeah. And so if you can have... If you can film your guys talking about what you're doing on site and get them involved, then that's awesome as well. And not being too precious about, about quality. I think a couple of things, phones are amazing these days. Mm -hmm. I think just practicing being on camera will go a huge way. And then if, if you're ready to, to engage a professional to start filming, then you'll already be streets ahead. Yeah. Uh, if you've already got a camera and that sort of thing. But again, a, a good editor can take some pretty average footage and still make a compelling video. I don't think, yeah, I think that sort of the perfectionism can hurt it a lot. Don't worry about it. Uh, yeah. Just get into it, get stuck into it. Because, yeah, it's, it is about your story. And as long as you've got really nice shots of the finished product, like that, invest the time and and the, and the money into getting um, beautiful shots of the finished project because it's gonna it's a beautiful thing. You don't want to sell your work short. Um, but construction during construction they can be gritty. Yeah. It's a dirty thing. You know what I mean? It, it it doesn't matter if it's if it's a little bit shaky or whatever because certain authenticity. There's a jackhammer that. next to you. Yeah. yeah, it's authentic yeah. and real. It's showing yeah. it really instead yeah. of this um, fake. What I call like a fake Instagram. Like, yeah, it, it, it's showing a certain level of real. Um, yeah. I suppose the same could be said about getting your website out there, blogs launched, content on social. So many people wait for everything to be perfect and it's really yes. just about getting it out there. Yes, yeah. Yeah, I think absolutely getting something up there and, again, not trying to overcomplicate it and not trying to present yourself as anything that you're not as a company that's it keeping it real keeping it authentic there will be people out there who will connect with that for sure and yeah and not again not over complicating it you can your website can be a very simple and elegant thing yeah and i view the website as in itself as a canvas and mm -hmm. then you fill it with content 
yeah. yeah. So, so if the photos of your finished projects are nice and you've got a nice headshot of, of yourself and your team and the words are well written, then that's a perfect website. It doesn't yeah. need to do anything more than that yeah. in terms of um, its development, yeah. What advice would you give, just to wrap it up and come to a nice yep. conclusion, what advice sure. would you give a landscaper just starting out? What would their one thing to do be? For, to get out there and to get their business going and start generating inquiries? So I might be a little bit biased, but I think having that website as a place to where we, we talk about the funnel, like yep. that's the capture point. That's You can direct them down the funnel, but the website, you want a singular place to direct people, I think. And yes. then in all your marketing efforts, everywhere like everything that you write your instagram posts directing them there yeah 100 um, i think again it's keeping it simple like you don't want to overwhelm people with a million options of what they could do directing them to what they can do so that's from an online presence kind of thing more broadly speaking when they're getting started i think it's like any business it's relationships it's getting yeah. Yeah, it's getting in touch with as many people, talking to as many people. I think social media people think that you need to have this big social media following, but you don't know who the audience is on social media. But when you're networking and building relationships, you can control that and who you're talking to, who you're talking to, and and yeah, I think that's the foundation for sure to start a business. I think down the track, social. Down the track, social yeah. media can play a huge role. But to get started, I think networking relationships is the most efficient way for sure. Yeah, I would 100% agree. Like you say, as you start to develop a marketing strategy, obviously you're going to have social media, you're going to have yeah, online stuff, you're going to do your blogs, you're going to probably do leaflets, maybe do some offline marketing. But initially you need a website and you need contacts. Yeah. And yeah, tell everybody. I think a lot of um, people are like, oh, I only want to talk to prospective buyers. Yeah. But but your mates might have mates who want a landscape build. Yeah. Yeah. So you just tell everybody what you're up to. Don't um, be embarrassed. Just keep showing yeah, yeah. it out. Yeah. yeah. Just absolutely get out there and say, this is what's happening. This is what I'm building. And, and yeah, I, in my businesses and so much work has come from yeah from two or three st degrees of separation yeah away from me that are like a friend's auntie's brother and yeah you don't know where it's going to come from no uh -huh. yeah that, that's the beauty of marketing <laughs> yeah yeah that's the beauty of it thank you for coming on appreciate your time yeah, no worries it's been great You're Tell people where they've got to go if they want to connect with you. 100%. You've got to go to buildastory.co. <laughs> uh, that's a website, that's by the way. <laughs> that's the web. Yeah, that's the website, buildastory.co. And there's a contact form right there. A little bit of a survey, which we didn't really touch on qualification, but that's such a big thing as well. And I'm getting... Oh, can I just talk about this? Yeah, of course you can. Of course you can. Go uh, ahead. Yeah. Go. It's on the Build a Story website. You go, and it's not just a contact form. We ask you a bunch of questions about you and your business, and that shows an interest one in you from our perspective, but it also means that we can assess whether you're a good fit or not, and it also yeah. means that if you are a good fit, we are hitting the ground running. Like we've got all that the little bits of pieces out of the way. We've already had a look at your existing website. We've got a feel for where your business is at. So yeah, we have, it's probably takes quite a bit longer to fill out than just email address, but in terms of building that relationship, having that little form goes a long way. Yeah. Go there, fill that out. And then we'll get in touch with you as quickly as possible. And, and yeah, we'll take it from there. Yeah. No qualification is key. I'm sure we'll talk more on that in one of our uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> upcoming webinars. Like I, I did say earlier, me and Kendall are going to be putting together some webinars that might be of interest to you guys as they are launched. We'll be marketing the yep. crap out of them anyway via a website. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. 
Borrow a good lead page. We could talk more on that as well. But yes. yeah, so there'll be lots more in the pipeline from us. All good stuff, marketing, customer journey, that sort of thing. So thanks again. So that was a guest podcast with Kendall from Build a Story. I hope you took at least one thing away from that regards your content strategy, your website, or your marketing in general. Um, we are really looking forward to developing these webinars for you, which we're going to be um, mapping out and putting together towards the end of February. So it's a really exciting time because for you guys, you're going to get some really good tips, advice on how to really go into the busy season, marketing and generating leads for your landscaping business, which is still one of the top questions I get asked for by my TLC clients and people in general in the industry. So we're always looking to continue developing our leads, bringing them in, keeping the funnel busy all through the year, really. doesn't really matter if it's busy season or not. We need leads for the business. And of course, we need to sell as well. So I will be touching on that in the webinars. We're going to be covering quite a lot, actually, for marketing, repurposing content, customer journey, sales, growth, or lots of different things. Keep your ears and eyes peeled on Instagram at The Landscapers Coach and at The Limitless Landscapers Podcast. If you want help growing your business, I have three spots left for one-to-one -one clients at the moment. So just drop me an email, paula at thelandscaperscoach.co.uk or find me on Instagram and drop me a DM at The Landscapers Coach and I can help you for 2024. So thanks for listening, guys, and I'll see you next week for another episode of The Limitless Landscapers Podcast. Ciao for now.